I don't want to be a mac potato. So I'm going to learn from old Bob. He's going to teach me what I need to know. So everyone, let's go. Welcome back, Mac Warriors. This is Old Bob 10025 to Old Bob's Mac Potato Time. Now, I decided to make these uh, for the new players that are out there, mainly for the new players that are just coming to the game, because this game does not have the best instructions about how to play or any type of anything to show you what's what and, and how everything works. So, I decided to go do that, and also to my older videos that I have, they're about about a year and a half old about um, to teach people how to go play this game so those are kinda out of date and plus I wanted to update my my older ones so this is what I'm doing now if you're a tier 1 player if you get something from us awesome if if not thank you for watching I do appreciate you watching so mainly this is for all the new players that are just coming into the game experiencing it trying to get a feel of like what the hell is this game and what it's all about so this is what I'm gonna go show you. So my last video showed you about um, how to change key bindings and weapons in game. And this video is gonna show you a little bit more into the settings of what's gonna go on. I'm gonna go through settings first, and then I'll go to the more of the combat oriented type stuff later on in other episodes. So bear with me on this. So we're gonna go down to settings on the right hand side. It's on the bottom right hand side under settings, it'll turn blue. And then I'm gonna show you the game settings and the mouse settings and what they do in the game itself. So First things first is disable tooltips and click it on. You have to click it in order to go ahead and have it on and click it to have it off. Now for a new player, disable tooltips might be a good idea for anyone who, who's actually playing the game that is new because it does tell you a lot of cool tips and everything else. So if you're a new player, keep this on for about a month or so and then take it off when you don't need it or you feel that you're actually more experienced into the game itself. So always keep that on or off. Now hide tier in front end, I'll show you what that does real quick. So you can hide the tier. Um, I don't know, but I think about a year ago, everyone was freaking out because it's showing the tier of a player uh, when they go ahead and stream or do other stuff like that, or you know, like just just whatever. So people don't want to show their tiers because they're they're jealous. I don't know, or actually fearful that someone's gonna make fun of them. So you either hide your tier in front end, or take it off. Okay, and okay, if not, if you don't hide your tier, what happens is this. You show your tier. I'm a tier two, I'm in the middle of tier two, I don't really give a crap because I do lots of really cool things and it gets me in trouble, do a lot of dumb things as well too. But most of the time I actually just get footage and, and basically this is just why I'm a tier two um, pug, I guess, or potato. So here you go guys. And then if you wanna have it off, you could hit the tier two, hit save. And then to save the settings, and they'll take it off, so no one shows. It doesn't show what my tier is. It's just a jealousy thing. People base their life on it. Yeah, just don't worry about it. Who really cares? To tell you the truth. So, go to settings. So let's go to the to the game itself in, in, inside a testing ground and show you what the rest of the game settings do. Okay, we are we are back in the testing grounds. And anytime you have any questions about any type of mech and how it's going to perform, how the heat management is going to be, go down to the testing grounds. And basically go ahead and okay, test out your mech and see how the heat performance is, see how fast it's going to move, see how big your jump jets are going to go, how fast your weapons will fire, just that kind of stuff, and set your settings and everything else from there. So let's go back to, I'm going to hit escape, go down to settings. So we covered uh, disable tooltips, high tier and front end. Now let's go to directional arrow, and I'll show you what that does. Now for new players, I recommend this constantly so you get used to it. I use it still because I have a hard time sometimes where my legs are going and so uh, this is one of the things that it, it definitely helps now the now the arrow or the directional arrow is this right here it shows a white arrow my feet are pointing in that direction that's what that does that shows where your feet are pointing because like everything else this this um, tank or this uh, mech walks like an M1 Abram so you could have your torso which is which represents the um, the the main gun and that's your torso and then you can figure out where your legs are going from there. So basically it helps for new players. I definitely suggest doing this because it's a pain in the ass like a lot of times. So this shows you exactly where it's going, where, where your legs are going. Cause in cities and stuff like that, it is kind of hard to kind of figure out where you're going. This will definitely help you out there. Okay, let's go back to settings. So you can either have it on or off. So it just depends what you want to have. Now enable cockpit monitors. I'll show you what that does. Okay. Okay, see on the top, on the top part of my uh, screen, it shows a bunch of dials and, and uh, green and red um, doohiggy things. It really doesn't do anything. It's just there for aesthetics 
to uh, say, hey, by the way, you know, your mech now has a screen that can show you useless information, but it makes it look kind of cool. And that's basically what that does. So, um, and I, for people with potato computers, I suggest you have that off or, or clicked. Actually, I think it's off here. Let's go see there. For people with, with potato computers settings, have that um, off. And so, because that that will that will help you out with your frame rate like issues, and just help you out in general when you're having problems like that. So it shows nothing on there. Now it's also not going to show your kill count on the right hand side. That's what the right hand side monitor is. Um, I think about 90% of the mechs do have a kill count monitor or a kill count one, and uh, it just all depends if if it's uh, if it's mounted somewhere you know, like special and that kind of stuff. So that's what that does. Enable or disable your cockpit monitors depending on how your frame rate issues are. Go to settings again. Okay, so we had that. Let's go with enable cockpit glass. Now, um, this is more of a kind of like a getting a feel of how MechWarrior is, the grittiness and everything. Like uh, there's the uh, the bog map. You will have stuff on your on your glass, like uh, you know pollen or just whatever is like on there. You either have it off or on. This is what it looks like when it's off, obviously. See here. That's what it looks like when it's off. Here's what it looks like when it's on. Settings. It's mainly just to kind of just say hey there's stuff on your mech or or just or just whatever see on the left hand side it's green has a green texture it's just there to make it look kind of hey by the way you know there's crap on your mech like sand and dirt and all that kind of stuff and that's what that does so that's just mainly if, if you're a new player you can have it on or off depending if you like it or not most vets just take it off because it's just a bunch of crap on there and it messes with their eyesights and just generalization not like that so let's take it off here do, do, do. Take it off. Okay, let's do a throttle. Let's do actually arm lock. Okay, okay. Our, our arm lock is a is a is a combat thing. Let's see how to explain this here. Okay, do you see little um little I don't know like circle and the and the line coming from it? That's where my arms are pointed towards. It's only for arm mounted weapons. On the right hand side, when you see the see this here, it shows you exactly where your weapons are. So I have. Two, I have four medium lasers in my arm, in my arms, two on each side, and then uh, on my torso, which is this here, this represents the torso. Yeah, I have two LB10Xs. Now, when you go look at the game, my LBX will always fire in that center target on the reticle. So, it's always going to fire there, no matter where I go. It's always going to fire there, wherever I, I point that thing. Now my arms, which is the the four medium lasers, will fire wherever my mech is, wherever. Um, let's see. I'll give you an example here. Hold on a second. Wherever that, um, wherever that circle is. So, oops, sorry about that. Fire. That's where my my arm mounted weapons will fire. Ignore. Always gonna fire there. While my torso mounted weapons will always fire in the middle of the screen, no matter what. So what a lot of people do, this is mainly used for when you're going up mountains, you can fire higher than your torso mounted weapons once. See how, see how the torso just fires right there? Now the arm mounted weapons can fire wherever that, that thing is. When you're going down mountains, you could use that to go fire down, so it's a lot easier for your arm mounted weapons. Then also when you go ahead and make up your your um, your weapon configurations, you set up your weapons so that you have the arms and then the torsos. That way you won't waste heat. See, if I had everything, give an example here. If I had say three uh, three of those and my torso amount of weapons, I'm firing there. I'm wasting a lot of heat. But if, if because I know that, let's see here. Doo -doo -doo. Here we go. Because I know that uh, I can only fire uphill, and 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 I'm uphill, and this and my and my front targeting for my torso won't won't shoot uphill. I can fire my other ones; they will shoot uphill. And that helps out when you're fighting mountains, when you're doing that kind of stuff, or even when you're fighting against um, faster mechs. Because a lot of times when you're tor when you're twisting, you you won't be able to go ahead and, and shoot that faster mech because all you're doing, if I'm firing my my front mounted cannons. I'm not going to be able to go ahead and shoot the guy. But if I'm using my arm out of weapons, I can. Let's see, give an example here. So I have a better angle to kill that fast mech trying to kill me. 
and that's what that and that's what that's used for. It's really good on uh, light max as well too, so it helps out the light max. So that's what that does. That's what arm out of like weapons do, or arm out of lock. Now if I have that off or clicked arm lock, all I can fire is right here, and that's it. Wherever that that front target thing. Now to get used to it, I suggest new players do just use arm out of lock at first for I don't know ten matches. 10 matches that way kind of get used to how the firing system works and then go back go back to the or, or go to disable arm lock and then basically you can fire your weapons like crazy in any different direction you want to so let's click that off there okay so let's go there okay throttle okay now without use your wasa keys to move obviously the and i'll go over movement on another video as well too so use a double to go the Use the W, yeah, excuse me, the W to go forward and use the S to go back, okay? So without throttle decay, you're always going to go forward when you put your, when you take your finger off the double, W, W, I can't even, can't even speak right. You, when you, whenever you're, if you have throttle decay off, you're always going to go ahead and go forward no matter what, even if, I'm not, I'm not even touching the keyboard, now I'm still going. So that's what throttle decay does. You bring it down, the same thing. You go backwards, always go backwards. I'm not touching the keyboard. So that's what throttle throttle decay does. So when you click it, give an example here. Oops. Settings. I want to keep throttle decay on. Save. So whenever I touch the W key, I'm going to go faster. But if I if I put my finger off the button, it's going to slow down. Same. Th uh, so my fingers are always on the WASA keys. So I know exactly how my movement's going to be. Now, I suggest using Throttle Decay for newer players because it, it, it gets you into a certain mindset to know exactly how you're moving and everything. So I, just, I suggest definitely use that because my because my fingers now, I'm going on W, my fingers on the W button, and I take it off, it's now slowing down. That's what Throttle Decay does. For new players, I suggest doing that just to get used to it. Okay, settings. Enable the third person the cockpit view. Okay, so when you don't start this off okay this actually starts at the beginning of the match start in third person view and the third person view is this if you hit the f3 key it sets you in third person view and that's what third person view what happens is yes you have a bigger range of fire or or, or view range to go and see things a lot of people think that's a big advantage but in mechware online it's not um do you see where my target is or, or my cursor is to fire my weapons I don't know where my weapons are going. I can't target as well because it only goes behind the mech itself. So I don't know exactly where my weapons are firing at or what they're doing or you know all that kind of stuff. So I can't really target or pinpoint my damage towards it. Plus I have a big mech ass right in, right in front of me, so I can't do anything. Now it looks like this when you're going when you're firing, but I like I said before, you can't target. That's what starting third person view is. Now it just get. Now, for newer players, don't play in this mode. It's only good to kind of like look over a mountain if you need to, or something like that, because what happens is, uh, just just like I said, you can't figure out what where where stuff is going, and it gets kind of confusing sometimes. So, only use this when you're trying to look over a mountain like this, or look around. Just do that, and then hit F3 again, and it gets you back to cockpit mode. So, but what happens also too is it has a little robot drone on top of you that everyone can see. So if you have that on, A, people are going to make fun of you. <laughs> B, um, you can't really hide per se. So let's say I'm hiding behind here. I'm hiding behind here, right? Let's see, get there. Okay. They're still going to see my robot drone above me showing, hey, by the way, there's a mech right there. Even if I'm hiding with ECM and everything else. So they're going to show it. It's going to show a little robot drone on top of, of my mech there. So it's not really a good idea to have that on constantly. Just like I said, it's only used to kind of really look over mountains or, or do stuff like that. And that's what I suggest you do. Don't use this for combat whatsoever because it's going to really screw with you. Okay, so arm lock, third person, enable cockpit glass. We got all those. Okay, so now first person field of view. This is tricky. Uh, a lot of vets use this because, um, show you here. Let me get back to uh, to my cockpit with F3. That's how you get back to your cockpit. Now, do you see on the right, on the right left hand side, I could see kind of iffy. Um, I could see, I can see a little bit, right, uh, uh, of my mech. Okay, I could see the glass on the right and left hand side. I could see a little bit of what's going on, but only if I do my torso. Only if I do that. Now, the cockpit view settings. 
with uh, first person fo uh, the fog of uh, the fog of view save what happens is I now can see almost everything so you see how that works and uh, for a lot of different mechs it helps out it, it definitely helps out to go ahead and have that but sometimes it really doesn't. Um, it's really hard to get used to. You have really a tunnel vision per se. So, so it's, it just all depends on how you like playing. I set mine just for 70, just for, um, at, you know, just for S and giggles, because it's not too, too bad. But it really, I don't know, for me, it, it definitely distorts the game. It definitely distorts the game for me because it's just that's a lot of information to go and deal with. And for newer players, I don't suggest you go above a 70. Let's see here. Let's see what I got mine set, set at. Um, yeah, I think I said mine for 70. Don't go above 70 if you can, because it's really not worth it. A lot of vets use it. Once you get experience, if you like it, use it. But it's not that... Um, it, it helps when you see stuff around your mechs, depending on the mech itself. Because it all depends on the glass of the mech or the cockpit of the mech to go see on the right, right and left-hand side. That kind of helps you out to see what's going on. If someone's shooting from the right side, who it is, and all that kind of stuff. So... I recommend you don't do that and just run at like 60 to 70, just like I am here. Now here's another setting I'll go show you. The sensitivity for the mouse setting. This is kind of tricky. You really have to play with your mouse. I have a really good mouse. Well, I have a cheap Chinese knockoff, but but it, it plays pretty well. And I set mine for 0.6. Now what the mouse sensitive, sensitivity settings do is this. So do you see how, I, how my mouse is like this? I myself i could target pretty well that way i could target pr pretty well and and i have i've been playing this game for a long time so i like this setting now it all depends what you like in itself and how you go ahead and play the game and so it takes a while to get used to this now if you have this too low let's go bring this down to zero save hit that there if you have this too low what's going to happen is this you're you're moving like this that is kind of slow, especially if you're being hit by a light mech and he's running around you, so you're not going to be able to go ahead and shoot the guy and you're having to move your mouse like this because you're trying to go shoot him and it's very, very slow. Now you might think, oh, this is perfect for a sniper, but what happens is once that light mech gets on you, you're going to be, you're gonna be um, up, up S Creek though. So and then this is what happens when it gets too high. When you put it too high, you actually have no concentration of where your of where your shots are going. It's way too high. You can't pinpoint your damage, and and long range shots you're trying to pinpoint, and one little tiny inch move, boom, you basically lose that pinpoint damage that you needed to get to go hit the center torso or the head. So, I recommend you definitely have it about 0.6. That's around the average. It all depends. Like I said, you have to play around with it to kind of like full to fool around with everything about the about the mouse settings. Let's put mine about to six here. I like mine at six. It just it's just how I like. It. I played around a lot with it, and it works out pretty well. Let's see here, go back to there. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's and that's pretty good. I like that. And I and I'm so used to this that I can pinpoint my damage and go where my damage wants to go, and you know I can move like really quickly. I could do whatever I need to go and do, and torso twist now, and, and everything else like that. So let's go back to settings here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, go through here. Now enable team chat, faction chat, um, the all chat, last chat, and chat notifications. All these are you, um, and and then the achievement like notifications. All these are used to to talk to other team members, to talk to your team, and to talk to your lance and game itself. The the called arms I'll go over in just a second here, but the reward display mode. This is modern. Okay, okay, right here. I'll show you classic real quick and go from there. Once I kill this mech right here, and then we'll go to kill like a, uh, we'll kill a, another mech here. One second. Target destroyed. That doesn't show it actually. But um, it, uh, on the middle screen, it shows like in little like letters saying, saying how many C bills you get um, how, and just how much everything else. Let's go to the other mech here. Now, Mech Potato was designed um, just like I told you before. While we actually do a, a, a run over to to the other mech here, it was designed to uh, help the new players out because I know this game has a really really high learning curve, but nothing like Eve Online. But it does have a pretty high learning cur curve to kind of figure out what needs to be done. And there's so much to this game that people don't really realize. 
it's not just big stompy robots trying to attack and kill each other. It's actually tactics, strategy, uh, what what mechs to use on what planets, um, you know, what weapon configurations you want to have and everything else. And the new skill tree is coming out too. So you know, obviously about a year from now, that's going to be um, useless. But the uh, the skill tree is going to totally uh, change everything about this game here. So that was classic. Clock, yeah, excuse me. Classic probably doesn't do anything. Let's go to modern here. I doubt it's going to do anything, but let's go check and see. I'm shooting the back because I'm a backstabber there. Target acquired. Target destroyed. Okay, didn't do anything. But normally on the screen, it does show that it has a uh, how many symbols you get if it's a lance, if it's a lance information, that kind of stuff. And that's what that does. Now all chat, okay, it doesn't actually have that there. But in a game itself. The, the lance chat, all chat, and the fact and the team chat will sh will be able to go ahead and you'll be able to talk to team members, talk to the, talk to the other team, kind of say hey, you know, basically that's a good shot or whatever you have. And lance chat, you talk to your lance mates itself, and that's uh, and then call to arms. I'll show what that is in just a second. And the colorblind, you if you're colorblind, use this. I like it because it just it just that I like that color, and basically you cannot have it or have it on depending on what you like there. So let's go back to. But match. I'll show you what the uh, the call to arms does. Normally, I take this off because it's faction warfare. Because I really do, I really don't do much faction warfare. But if you do faction warfare, you want to have this. You want to see what's going on. That that might be a good thing for you. But for new players, I don't suggest you actually do faction warfare until you at least get four mechs that you're really good at and mastered and know how these mechs work and and then go into faction warfare because it is a very unforgiving game to go ahead and, or, or mode to get into and there's a lot of elite players play it so get ready for a lot of like waffle stomps when you actually go play that game okay so let's go to settings we're gonna we're gonna do called arms and notifications have this on or clicked means you will get some let's see here we'll get some here let's get some and it will come up right here as saying um, call to arms to inner sphere to this place or to this planet and that's what that would do so and then the vision now if you're not playing faction warfare this gets kind of funky because this whole thing fills up with a bunch of stuff you don't need it you don't want to have it and it blocks all all different things that it, you have your mech bay and everything else so you can either dismiss it but it comes right back that's why you click it off click it off and you will never get those again so that's what that does. Now the uh, the team chat or or the faction chat, which is this, this is a good way to actually go ahead in the for chat, ask questions of different action members inside the community because everyone's really good in this community. They're very nice and they're willing to help new players. So when you go ahead and ask questions, just ask them in a polite manner. You might get some ass hats, but you really won't get that many ass hats. A lot of good people, like I said, great community players that want to help you. So that's that's the whole thing that you got to realize that this game is unlike any other games you played with uh, World of Tanks, where if you mess up, you they want to come over and chop off your head, or you know, any, or any other type of games. This game is one of the games that a lot of people love helping new players because they want to get you into it because they're really passionate about the game itself. Okay, so let's get out of that. And that is the settings for the front page. I plan to do audio video. Uh, I'm probably gonna, I'll, my my next video is probably going to be audio, video, keyboard, and control. Well, the control I can't do because I don't don't have one. But if you have, if you have a controller, cool. The keyboard and everything else. But learn the keys and the keyboard. I'll probably do audio video as a short one, and then I'll start going into combat oriented type stuff of um, where to put your weapons, um, how, how to do mech lab and everything else. And also the skill tree will be coming out too and how to do the skill tree. I'm probably going to be doing the skill tree next because that comes out um, on May 16th, 2017. If you hear this and it's 2020, it's an old video. <laughs> so I do appreciate you watching. Thank you, my friends. I, you know, all the tier one players, everyone, all my friends and everyone else. Thank you for watching my videos. I do appreciate it. Like I said, and if you have any questions, comments, or anything else, leave them down in, leave them down below. I'll be able to get to them as fast as possible and as intelligently, intelligently, yeah, intelligently as possible. Go ahead and answer your questions if you case you in case you have any. Do appreciate it. Thank you, and I will see you on the battlefield.